Why are you all smiling? This is the worst news I've heard forever. You mustn't smile, George. It's very serious. It is. Anyway, carry on. What is the climate crisis? The climate crisis is a change in the temperature of the entire Earth as a result of human activities. We've increased the carbon dioxide content of the atmosphere by about 30%. That's a lot, and carbon dioxide is one of three large infrared absorbing gases that make up the atmosphere. They absorb radiant energy from the sun, and in absorbing it, warm the atmosphere. In other words, a greenhouse gas? It's is that a greenhouse, greenhouse gas is? And what are the other two? Methane and water vapor. Is there a naturally occurring certain amount of carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor that is just naturally, I mean, pretend there were no fossil fuel emissions whatsoever, et cetera, et cetera. For hundreds of thousands of years, the uh -huh. carbon dioxide concentration of the atmosphere was about 280 parts per million until we came along and started burning coal and oil and fossil fuels in general. And in burning that, we dumped carbon from sediments in the crust of the Earth back into the atmosphere. In doing that, we've raised the carbon dioxide content of the atmosphere to about 410 parts per million. What does all that mean? Why do we really um, give a hoot about this? This place that we live in, all around the Earth, have climates and temperature regimes and plants and animals dependent on those climates, those temperature regimes, the natural communities of the earth have actually built the environment that's suitable for people and suitable for those natural communities. The people have come along now and changed that environment. Extreme examples of that would be the multitude of wildfires, correct? Well, that's another aspect of that. Changing oh the temperature of the earth dries the earth out more right. rapidly. It means that uh, water evaporates more rapidly. Forests become dry in odd times and vulnerable to fire, but also vulnerable to diseases of various sorts. Right. In this warmer climate, they rot rapidly and they dump carbon into the atmosphere from the forest. So here's an additional source of it's carbon. It's compounded then. It's compounded. It's a feedback system. I think of the world as a biophysical system, as I've described it Yeah, to you. you certainly do. I'm trying to wrap my head around all of what <clears> you just <throat> said, but keep going. The Arctic warmed two to three times as rapidly as the Earth as a whole. The effect of that is to melt the Arctic. Well, doing that has opened up the Arctic Ocean, which was frozen year round, and that's reflective. That reflects the light of the sun, and it remains cold. If one takes that ice away, that reveals the dark oceanic waters of the Arctic Ocean, which then absorb the, the radiant heat. In warming, they produce water vapor, which goes into the atmosphere, oh. carrying the energy of vaporization. It takes energy to vaporize water. That energy goes off in steam, and uh, same way with the oceans. If they're warmed, they lose water into the atmosphere as water vapor, which is also a heat-trapping gas, and it provides the energy for storms. So we're building more energy into the atmosphere to drive storms. At the same time, we are warming the Earth more. Now, in warming, the soils of the Arctic thaw. Well, the Arctic has great depths of organic matter in tundra. Tundra soil is, has been built up over thousands of years, and that organic matter decays as the surface of the Arctic warms, dumps its carbon dioxide, and methane. So you ask why we have a crisis. Well, there it is. We have that crisis because there are various feedback systems that are thrown into play when the Earth warms. And they have the potential for taking control out from human hands. Now we have meetings of UN committees saying, 
well, it would be okay to let the Earth drift toward one and a half degree change in temperature, and we'll stop it at that. We can accommodate that much. Well, that's not true. It is flat out wrong. You call the warming, BS. I didn't Do you? call it that, but uh, may I? <laughs> I really think that they are discounting the hazards of the feedback systems. Mm -hmm. So that if we were to allow the temperature of the Earth to rise to by one and one half degrees for as an average for the Earth as a whole, we would be in a circumstance where the warming was out of control. Because of what you described earlier, like the carbon dioxide. We'd that have they get more forest fires, yeah, we'd right. have more dead trees, we'd have the organic matter and soils decaying very rapidly and dumping carbon into the atmosphere. This all sounds very dire because it is very It is dire. dire. Okay. It's downright dire. I know it's downright dire. So my question is this, do we just throw up our hands do we just give in to it? Or what attitude can we approach? What actions can we take? You said it's not just cutting back on our fossil fuel consumption. What else can we do besides that? Or we have we? to eliminate fossil fuel consumption. We have to eliminate it. Just plain eliminate it as rapidly as possible. Well, that should be a sin, George. Just fall all over ourselves yes. to stop burning oil and okay. coal. We have to refreeze the Arctic. And I don't see any way to do that other than to take carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. One thing we have to do immediately is to stop deforestation. Further deforestation is simply dumping carbon into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. The atmosphere contains roughly 800 billion tons of carbon. And in the summer, photosynthesis pulls the CO2 concentration of the atmosphere down by several parts per million. And in winter, that's returned to the atmosphere. Those are big chunks of carbon that's mm -hmm. 100 billion tons on a global basis flowing into plants and out in the course of a year. So that's really big stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you can manage that properly, one can control CO2 content of the atmosphere. Very hard to see how we can do that and continue with industrial agriculture the way we're going at the moment. We are in an emergency without much question. Right. And so transitions, big transitions are appropriate, necessary, and real. We mm -hmm. can do it. We can shift to electric sources of energy using energy produced renewably. Solar panels, windmills, Wind. mm -hmm. tidal mills. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of exciting to think about the new things you can do. You can have a local electrical corporation. Three or four houses can get together and produce all their own electricity and hmm. run their houses independently. Mm -hmm. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, that sounds cool. Oh, yeah, it's, it is cool or warm, whether it's Depending summer Depending on or what, yeah. exactly. And if Mr. Trump doesn't want to believe in the warming of the Earth, the warming of the Earth is going to go on just the same.